feel like the only difference between a religion and a cult is how many people are practicing it at a given point in time. Like, that's it. And maybe, you know, how intense your desire is to exclude people, how intense your desire is, or that organization's desire is to brainwash somebody and to ignore literal scientific fact. Um, because they all run to the church over dumb shit, but then they run to the hospital when they, you know, when something serious actually happens. Even then, they still doubt the science that saves them. So it's just like, I think that as much as we are talking about the, the cultish nature of what I'm about to like get into, it's like a lot of things from stand culture to the religions that we see all across uh, this country and this globe, a lot of that shit has cultish natures to it. And the faster and sooner that we talk about it, the more that we can save ourselves from dumb shit. Like, it's just, <laughs> I hate things that encourage you to turn off parts of your brain. I don't really know how I'm gonna talk about this because it's such an interesting, <laughs> Oh my gosh, it, it just it took up a huge part of my life when I was younger. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna jump around how I see fit. So the reason I was even in this shit in the first place is because I was born into it, right? So I, I came from just my family is Jamaican as hell. <laughs> so I was I'm talking about born into veganism, <laughs> like going to church every fucking week. I mean, multiple days a week. And it was just, from there, as a child, you just accept it. You accept it because that's what you, like, that's the first thing that you know is your introduction to reality. Um, and it's only when I got a little older that I saw the bubble that I was living in. And then, of course, me being queer, I'm sure that, <laughs> that, that accelerated the process of just freeing my mind and thinking about the world, the universe, um, different religions, atheism, in, in a completely different way, in a way that like actually respected what I actually believed about the world. Like seeing through all that brainwashing was very important for me um, to just release myself from feeling like I had to do certain things. So Seven Day Adventism, of course, is a sect of Christianity, and they they just very literally. <laughs> I would say that they're literalists, especially like Bible literalists, especially, I'm just going to speak about like the experiences that I had. I don't know what they're doing now, obviously, like I don't know what's going on, but back then, I'm telling you, it was a lot. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because I recently, like a couple days ago, talked to someone who also got out of the clutches of Seven Day Adventism and like their family is, is a tricky thing to talk about because they're still in it, but it's like, I'm not going to, like we were having a conversation, we were both agreeing like, I'm not going, as much as you can love certain family members, it's like you can't take your, your mind and your soul back to that shit. So we were having a conversation, I was like, you know what, I should talk about it. And uh, Mark, <laughs> actually, uh, on Twitter, he, he was just like, you should make a video on it. And so here we are. When I, grew, when I got a little bit older, it was so difficult to even just have certain regular conversations because there were huge parts of pop culture that I completely missed out on, right? Um, we're talking about when 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 I was deep in it, obviously because of my family, I had no fucking choice. <laughs> when I was deep in it, like when the sun set on Friday, everything that's secular had to be turned off. All conversations had to really be about Sky Daddy, had to be about God from Friday night because they kept the Sabbath, right? So from Friday night to Saturday night, I mean, regular TV you couldn't watch on Saturdays. It would have to be something about God. It would have to be, maybe you could push it with like a nature documentary since you're talking about like, you know, God's creation or whatever. Saturdays were for church and then Seven Day Adventists have this like, this vitriol for anybody, any other sect of Christianity that worships on <laughs> Well, first of all, any other sect of Christianity, all y'all going, like they just thought everybody was going to burn in hell. <laughs> But definitely for the sects of Christianity that did not worship on Saturdays. If y'all did it on Sunday, they would just talk down on these people. I mean, communion, you'd be washing niggas' feet. I'm talking about for real, okay? What else? Women were not allowed to wear pants in church. Like, I'm telling you, couldn't wear makeup, couldn't get their ears pierced, couldn't get any piercing, couldn't wear jewelry, couldn't go to the fucking movies. I did not go to the movies until I was in college. You know what I'm saying to you? <laughs> college? Yeah, college. I did not step foot inside a movie theater uh, until college. So I'm telling people about my childhood experience thinking that, oh, some of this shit is normal. Some of it, I knew that a lot of it wasn't as I got older, but some of it wasn't. 
and I'm telling people my, about my experiences, they look at my face like, bitch, you didn't go to prom? Like, no, because that was dancing. You couldn't dance. <laughs> couldn't go to the theaters, couldn't go to prom, couldn't go, you couldn't do shit. Couldn't do shit. I mean, I was sitting there because of course music was the only thing that could help me just deal with that shit. <laughs> you know, so at least I'm playing music for the church or something, praise team, whatever the fuck. So I'm, I'm, I mean, you be playing fucking piano, playing, playing, the, I was on the organ too, child. Who's such a pulpit fag? That's, I mean, I was playing the piano and you would hear them sometimes while I'm literally on, in front of their ass, like literally by, right by the preacher, you know, playing the piano, playing, playing the instruments or whatever. You just hear, going off about gay people, how they gonna burn. I, I mean, I remember this pastor going up there saying like, how could, how could you even want to be rolling around in the bed with another man? I want the soft tenderness of a woman. I mean, you can just go into homophobia. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm sitting there like, bitch, I want some dick right now. The fuck you talking about? Like, I'm at this piano, I want some fucking dick. The fuck you talking about? Oh, how could you, how could you envision yourself rolling around with another man? I, I envision it daily. The fuck you talking about? I mean, that don't even get into the half of it, okay? I, like, I have to shorten th this shit for the length of this video. We talking about, I mean, girls, these girls, these teenagers getting pregnant and shit in the church, and they would take their ass up in front of the church while they sitting there pregnant, like literally, basically embarrass their ass and excommunicate them, right? So you have, I mean, toxic cultures of people staying in marriages that they fucking hated. They hated each other in these marriages and they would take their ass to their bitter asses to church and, and shit on all the young people who have even some sense of light in their eyes. Because like, bitch, if I'm bitter, if I have to stay in this fucking marriage because Sky Daddy said so, then everybody else around me going to be fucking bitter. And it's like the way that these old ass, I'm just specifically just off the top of my head, these old ass, bitter ass, self-hating ass, hating their own lives ass, older woman, the way that they would shit on these young women. The way they and these these men around there in their church, I mean, they would be able to do what the fuck they want, and and the manipulation and brainwashing that they used was definitely effective against women and finding women for them to easily abuse and take advantage of. And most whether it be emotionally, sexually, physically, they, it was fucked up. It was fucked up. I remember asking one of my parents about like the story of I forget which motherfucker it was, Isaac, Isaac Abram. I don't know. One of them people where Sky Daddy told him like, yo, bring your son to this, I don't know, some mountain or some shit and kill him basically as a sacrifice for me. And the father was literally taking, took his son to the altar and was going to do that shit. Like did that shit. <laughs> he was going to do that shit. And then I guess Sky Daddy came out of nowhere and said, just kidding. I see, basically I see that your faith for me is strong. The fact that you would kill your own fucking son, right? So basically you passed the test. And I remember asking one of my parents, like, okay, so what was y'all doing in that situation? Like, if some random voice out of the sky told you to fucking kill me, okay, to prove your fucking, like, what would you fucking do? And they literally said, I'd have to think about it. <laughs> I'd have to think about it. That's mental illness, bitch. The fuck you talking about? That's mental illness. But that's just one example. I remember we were sitting for, like, worship. That's how we would bring in the, the Sabbath, like, on Friday night. We'd just, like, sing some hymns or read some scriptures or some shit. I remember sitting down there and my fucking father... Was it, I guess we were being too rowdy. Bitch, we were kids. The fuck you talking about? I remember my father said, if I was God, I would strike y'all down all down right now. <laughs> just like that. Just like that. And the thing is, that that's the type of environment, not only like the family was with religion, it was, that's the entirety of the church. That's how they speak. It wouldn't be anything crazy to hear that because that's how they would speak and think. And that's why I'm just like, that's, it's colonization of the mind if you think that some random ass being in the sky is scanning your every thought for sins and shit. Like, that's, that has to be traumatic as fuck, right? So, the more and more I got older, the more and more I'm seeing the world for what it is, can't see it fully because I'm still in the bubble, right? The more and more I'm asking questions, right? My family, my, the, my church wanted me to think critically about every single thing in this world from finances to fucking academics to everything. They want me to think critically about every other aspect of this life except religion. I'm asking my family, I say, okay, you, I'm y'all I'm y'all child just like how we're all God's kids. Would you throw me in a fucking fire no matter what I did? Would you burn my ass up alive? They're like, no, why would I do that? No, why would I do that? But your worship is somebody who, who 
is a jealous God and want, and will do that shit to your ass if you don't worship them. And I'm just like, that's how, that's the type of, of mentality that they would take in raising kids. It's, it's the same like fire and brimstone shit that they're scared of. They almost position themselves in that type of authoritative title and that's how they raise their kids. Some of them, it's not with a whole lot of love. It's not with like, you know, mutual understanding and respect. It's almost like, bitch, I'm, I'm a jealous God, I'm a jealous, you know what I mean? It's that kind of, you gonna burn if you don't worship me. Like, it was so sadistic when I, as I got older and was thinking about that. I'm just like, bitch, who the fuck love me or burn, you know? That's the type of shit that they get into. So when you question that, as I question that, as the older I got, the more I question it, um, it was it was just like, it was almost blasphemous to even bring up, like y'all opening this old ass book and ba basing your whole entire life and laws and the way that, I mean, my queerness is a problem because of this old ass book, but y'all ain't fucking worshiping Zeus and shit. They got old ass books about that shit. Y'all ain't worshiping fucking Athena and shit. We learned about that shit in school. It's one thing to watch a Prince of Egypt movie and be like, okay, that's a cool, that's cute ass story, bitch. Just it, like it's like Game of Thrones. That was a cute ass story. The Lord of fucking Light. The others, the strangers, the, all these gods and shit. It's just like the the, uh, the the absurdness that they believed and the dissonance that they had to have in order to shit on everybody else's religion who's believing things that are just as absurd as you're believing, the hatred that they had in their hearts for that. It's just like, they expect you to sit there and ignore everything else about the world that they are also ignoring. And I could not fucking do that. When I went to college, it just, it, it like, the more that I accepted that I did not believe that shit, I was more, I, at that point I was like agnostic when I was leaving that shit. Now I'm just, it's giving atheism for me. But the more I let go of that, the more I also had to let go of this fantasy, idealistic, and I did it in my younger years, but I think college just when I really did it, like when I left, when I left, oh my gosh. <laughs> When I left, that's when I really did it. And I had to let go of this I, this fantastical idea that there's gonna be some magical place where everything would be wonderful in heaven and da 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 da. And that, but it also allowed me to let go of this idea of burning, <laughs> burning alive like hell. You know, so once I got into college and once I did my research for myself about how colonialism spread all these fucking religions around, how religions are used by uh, governments, how paganism and all that shit transfer into Christianity, how science and facts and shit lead to more reliable conclusions about the world and universe that we live in because they're tested and proven and you can, you know what I mean, equations and shit. Like the more I learned about the world, actual existence, the less, I, the less I thought that shit fucking made any goddamn sense. And now I'm at a place where, like I said, I'm, I'm not even talking about the, the kinds of trauma that I got because I was queer. Like we ain't even talking about that. I'm just talking about overall belief. <laughs> we, we, I don't need an hour long video to talk about that shit. We ain't even talking about the queer shit, right? But yeah, the more I learned, the more I saw, because they have this thing where they want to be in the world, but not of the world. And it's just like, man, you're going to take your dumb ass to a hospital if something happens to you. you ain't Ain't fucking being called up by Sky Daddy. He ain't beaming your ass up. You got fucking corona. Your arm is broken, bitch. You're taking your ass to uh, uh, these doctors and shit who had studied science for a long time to help y'all stupid ass out. Anything, any, anything, any group, any fan base, any stand base, any religion, any, any kind of organization that requires you to turn off parts of your fucking huge parts of your logic in order to maintain this closeness to this shit. And there's so many similarities in how cults are so exclusive and how you, you know, you're shamed if you want to leave, blah, 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 blah. If you got the truth, then people should want to come to it naturally, sweetie. You shouldn't have to bulldoze people. Knock it. They had me knocking on people's doors, going door to door, sweetie, talking about the good news of Sky Dad. You know what I mean? And there's this nasty, underbelly of colonialism, like I said, and the mission trips and all that shit, I'll feed you if you fucking worship, worship white Jesus. Like, it's, ter it's, just, it's just all around terrible. So any kind of group or association, organization that requires you to turn off large parts of your logic or who tries to avoid real questions, human questions, and tries to act like you even asking them is blasphemous, you need to think twice about what you're doing, what, you, like, what, you're, what you're in. But you're in. Now, granted, like I said, I didn't have no choice because I was born into it. I had to take my ass to church. Like, it was just like, bitch, I live here. Like, what am I going to do? Run away? I mean, I wanted to multiple times, but it was just like, I was way too smart to know that, that I was, I just knew that was not feasible. They want you to act like what you're seeing is not what you're seeing. That's just a scary ass place to be in. 
you know so I don't know I just anybody who feels like they need that extra push extra just get out of it and the more that you express yourself for what you actually want to do and the more that you explore life in the way that you actually want to explore it, it become it becomes more natural to you to do it's like second nature it may be hard at first especially if you've been raised in it all your life and that's all you know but the more you ex the more you explore yourself because that's the whole point in my opinion is that they don't want you to explore yourself in your own power especially if you're like a woman uh, but the more you explore yourself the the easier it will be to live in the way that you want to live especially if you're trying to distance yourself from a, a way of life that has been destructive and the other side of it like I said is just not going just dealing with the difficulties of not being around the family members who are still in that shit because especially like I said all that queer based trauma that y'all had me go that they had me go through it's like I had to distance myself from their ass in order to heal and develop into a full human being and they might get pissed at that they might they might but like is their anger is there are their emotions you know, worth more than your peace and sanity. So, yeah, I would love to see if anybody else had uh, experiences with Seventh-day Adventism or any kind of cultish religion uh, group organization like that, because that's what it is. That's just, that's, that's what it is. If you want to block people from seeing what's out there or from experiencing the truth of the world and y'all want to live in this bubble, you want people to shut down their logic, that's fucked up. That's cultish to me. And, and it's a lot of <laughs> groups, like I said, organizations, religions that fit that bill. So let me know what y'all think. I'm glad I talked about it. Hopefully, like I said, this helps somebody who's in like that weird place of like, I'm trying to leave or anything, whatever it is. I'm trying to leave, but I don't know how my life will look without it. But I, I knew I needed to ditch that shit when I reached, um, I just was counting down the years to move out. Like, <laughs> but like, but when I did move out, that's when it really solidified like what I believe. What, what I see and what I, what, I, what I accept that I know and what I accept that I don't know. So yeah, love y'all so much. Thank you so much for watching and make sure that you have a good goddamn week.